Hello everyone, this is Siddhant Ray here. This is part 3 of the series of basics of Python programming language. This video covers string slicing and the if functions. So without any further ado, let's begin coding. So what string slicing essentially means creating a substring by extracting elements from another string. So string slicing can be done in two ways, either through indexing. So indexing makes use of round brackets, uh, square brackets, sorry, and slicing, which makes use of round brackets. So now the format for indexing is the starting index, the stopping index, and the step of the index. So before we know what indexing actually is, we need to know the concept of index. So basically, an index is a value used to access a specific element in an array or a collection of data. So in layman terms, an index just means the position of a character in a given set of data. So for instance, let's declare a variable name is equal to and let's take my name, for example. Siddhant Ray. Note that the variable is always supposed to be declared to a string data type because obviously as the name suggests, string slicing is slicing a string data type and that's why this function is going to slice a particular part of this string. So it always has to be a string data type. So there are a few basic rules of indexing which we need to remember. There are three basic rules. First of all, an index always starts with zero. So if anyone asks the index of s in this variable, you'll always say that the index of s is zero. Secondly, the starting index is always inclusive and the stopping index is always exclusive. The second and third rule we'll come to later. But for now, let's see the first rule and its applications. So for example, if we want to know the index of h for that, it's very simple. We just need to count it manually. So s is zero, i is one, d is two, then the second d is three. And this h is index 4. For cross-checking what the actual index of h is, we just need to go to the next line and print a specific code. So print bracket name and we just need to type in the index which we want to print out. So we want to print out the fourth index in the data type which is held in the variable of name. So that means it's going to print out h because the fourth index in this variable is h. Let's run and check if it works. So as you can see, it printed out H. So now let's have a look at the starting index and the stopping index features and the second and third rule of indexing, which I had told you just a couple of minutes ago. So for that, let's delete this off. Now, for instance, we just want to print out the first name, which is Siddhant. Using indexing, this can be very easily carried out. So first, let's define a variable called first name is equal to. Now, here comes the part of string slicing. So we basically want to slice out Siddhant from the entire variable Siddhant Ray. So now for that, we just need to do name square brackets. So we need to type in so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We need to put the starting index as 0. We need to put in the stopping index as 8 and not 7 because I clearly told you that the stopping index is exclusive and let's leave the third part blank as of now. So let's print and so for that we need to print. So let's print first underscore name. Let's see how this works. So as you can see it printed out Siddhant. So now let's see if we would have put in 7 over here instead of 8 what it would have printed out. See, it printed out Siddhan. Although the index of T is 7, I had clearly told you that the, la the stopping index is exclusive and that's why always it needs to be plus 1. So even if we put plus 1 over here, it is going to print out Siddhan. As you can see, it printed out Siddhan. Now, what if I want to print out the last name, which is Ray? So let's define a variable as last name. Last name is equal to name. Now, the starting index in this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
So the starting index is 9. The stopping index will be 9, 10, 11 and 11 plus 1 which is 12 because the stopping index is exclusive. And once again, let's keep this blank for now. And now let's print out the last name. So it's clearly visible that it printed out Ray. Now, what if I want to print out a weird name? So I'm using this weird name example to explain to you the concept of the step of the index. So let's define a variable as weird name. Is equal to name. Let's keep the square brackets empty for now. So zero to 12 to empty. So what this should essentially print right now is just the full name. Now you can see it printed out the full name, but I want it to be a bit weird. For that, I can just replace this with two. So let me explain to you what it did right now. In these first two cases, we left this third blank, which is the step of the index as empty. And this basically is automatically filled by the Python interface as one and one again here as well. So what this one basically means is that after it has printed the zero index, so it starts off from here, it prints the zero index, then it will take one unit to the right, print out this, then take one more unit to the right, print out this, sorry, it will take one more unit to the right, print out this, one more unit to the right, print out this, till we reach the stopping index, which is exclusive. So for printing out a weird name, so obviously when we put in one over here, it printed out the full name for us because what it's doing is, it's taking the zero index, moving one to the right, one to the right, one to the right and printing it out in this way. But what if we put two over here, then what it's going to do is S followed by D followed by H followed by N. It will take every second character from the index, which it is printing previously. So S then D then H then N followed by the space bar, followed by A. And then because it has reached index 12, it is going to stop the command. So now let's print weird name. So S, D, H, N, space bar, A. As I said, it printed this out. So if it were three, it would be more weird, like almost close to not understanding the name. It's just S, D, N, R. And you can't just make out that the name was Siddhantri. Now, last but not the least, let's understand the concept of reverse. So what if I want to reverse this string and print it out as Y A R space bar followed by T N A H D D I S. So the command for that is pretty simple. Let me define a variable as reverse name. Reverse name is equal to name square brackets colon colon minus one. We don't need to put in these because the Python interface or the Python processor is just going to automatically understand that the starting index is the starting index and the stopping index is the final index plus one because the stopping index is exclusive and we just need to put in minus one because we want to reverse it and not print it out the straightforward way. Now let's do print reverse name. So as you can see it printed out my name but in the reverse manner. So yeah, that was it for indexing. So now let's understand the concept of slicing. So for that, let me comment out this entire piece of code. Oh, yeah. Now what slicing does is slicing, as I've said earlier, makes use of round brackets. So to explain slicing to you, there is no other better way to explain slicing than by explaining it using the example of websites. So I've got two websites open here, maharashtra.government.in and mp.government.in. So let me quickly copy paste the entire links of these websites onto my Python window. Yeah. Now let me name this as website one, put this within string as in put it within double quotes so that it becomes a string and this one as well and let's name this as website 2. So for example, I want to just print out Maharashtra and this for that what I'll do is print website 1 
brown brackets index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 11 plus 1 12 so it will be 12 followed by so this one was the 11th one 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 so 23 because 22 plus 1 and followed by 1 or we can just leave it empty so as you can see it printed out maharashtra but what if we want one common piece of code that prints out mp as well as maharashtra because if i run this for website 2 it will give me an it will just print out some other thing ov.in and it won't print out mp because these don't have common indexes because maharashtra and mp have different number of characters within them so obviously they have different indexes so now for fixing this issue we need to understand the concept of negative indexes so what negative indexes essentially are are just indexes in the reversed way so for example this will have the index of minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five minus six minus seven minus eight this will have the index of minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five minus six minus seven minus eight as we can see for the last part in the names of these two websites are common and we can make the benefit of this to print out mp as well as maharashtra so let's see how this works so for making this work we need to have similar starting indexes as well so for example let's edit the name of the website to www.mp.government.in so that we have the same stopping index as well as the same starting index so for the starting index it's obviously just going to be so let's keep this as website 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 the starting index will be no 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 will be the starting index then the stopping index will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it will be minus 8 and similar for website 2 as well 12 followed by minus 8 followed by another code colon although we can leave it empty we need to always put in the colon so we ran this and as you can see let me enlarge it it printed out maharashtra and mp with common indexes so we just need to copy paste the indexes and we just need to name change the name of the variable and this can save us a lot of time if we have the name if we have the links of the websites and we have to print out the name of all the states of india so this saves us a lot of time as the index is common we just need to change the name of the variable that the link is affiliated to so that was pretty much it for string slicing now let's have a look at how if functions work so for the if condition let me again comment out this piece of code what the if condition actually means is if it will execute the code if the condition is true so to make it more interesting for you guys let me explain it using a real world example so for example there's a country in which there have been a lot of cases reported for underage driving and there's also a lot of unemployment in the country and the government of the country is forcing its engineers to bring in technology to check the age of drivers at particular checkpoints so the programmers were like okay sure and because this was a very easy task using if functions they were able to make a very good piece of code so i'll show you how those engineers did that so let's declare a variable at the start so let's name it as age is equal to int input so if you guys remember in the part one of this series i had told you how to take in inputs and how to do type casting so it will take an input what is your age or to make it a bit more professional for a country enter your age so it looks like a formality more than a question so it will take only the integer data type and it will be an input function because you are asking and they have to input now let's take if age greater than equal to 18 print 
show your driver's license to the camera and we will leave you but if age is less than equal to 18 i'm taking 18 as the limit because in a country like especially in india the as far as i know the age for driving starts at 18 so you need to be at least equal to 18 or you need to be greater than 18 because but if you are under than 18 sorry i have to put in less than 18 if you're under than 18 you're not allowed to drive so if age is less than 18 i'm going to print you are under age i have captured your photo you are under arrest i mean arresting would be too harsh for a child but we can just say you are under the supervision of police supervision of the cops so that was literally it and if the system is more advanced like for example it, if it actually uses cameras and uh, it can send data to the servers of the government then this could actually be an example of a machine replacing labor so yeah that was it for the if functions actually because if is a very basic syntax look it seems like it's a very very complex or a lengthy syntax but that actually comes in with logical operators which will which we'll be looking in the next video which covers the syntax of and and or so from now on from this if function i am confident to say that functions like if and logical operators like and and or are actually the ones that are used in real life applications of python for example, the ones that are used in actual engineering projects are the ones that are used in websites. So if you open any Python code, you'll see that the if function is one of the most widely used uh, pieces of code. So yeah, just for starters, I'm saying that if you want to learn advanced programming within the basics, so it actually starts from this part of the video of if and the next videos. So yeah, stay tuned for the upcoming parts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please smash the like button. Also, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Siddhan's Coding World. So yeah, see you soon everyone. Bye for now.